Yo, what is going on everybody? This is Mystical Tay. I am bringing you a 9.1.5 Miss Weaver Monk PvP guide where you're going to learn everything that I use, everything that you need, hopefully to go from zero rating to any rating you want. And with that said, let's jump right into it. Before I jump into the rest of the video, I just want to answer the question of why you want to play Miss Weaver in the first place. It's not a surprise that Miss Weavers are in a tough spot right now, but I don't think Miss Weavers are that bad. I think our healing output is great. Our mobility is one of the best if not the best and they're just a lot of fun to play you'll always hear me say miss weavers are the most fun spec in the game to play and that's because it's true as far as how good they are competitively i think miss weavers although they're not the best healer right now i think they're very close to being one of the best their healing output is i would say one of the best i think rest of druids probably have the best healing output miss but monks are really close and i think we're just shy we're a few changes shy of being one of the best healers in the game with that said, let's just assume you have never logged into the game or you've never created a monk and let's try to figure out what race is the best and I'll go from Horde and Alliance. Uh, for Horde, there is really only one option. Now, there are many options if you don't want to, you know, min-max your character, that's fine. If you're trying to min-max your character, your best race is going to be Orc. They have Hardiness, which reduces stun effects on you and if you play a Mistweaver, you, you know how important it is to have stun reduced. You're going to die in a stun, but Orc gives you the best chance of survival um if you're not trying to max your character undead is also really good warlocks warriors shadow priests those three have fears and they are some of the best specs in the game right now so you're going to be queuing into a lot of them so you'll get um will of the, of the forsaken which gets you out of fears and that's really good for undead outside of that i don't think there's many other options you could go maybe tauren but i don't even think that's a good choice blood elf is good because you get mana back but monks don't really have a lot of issues with mana right now so i think orc is your best ratio for sure but if you don't want to go orc undead is also pretty good now as far as alliance goes are you really you you do have a few more options than horde human is by default the best option you can go the reason for this is because i'm not quite sure of the name i have it on the screen i i just know as every man for himself which what this does is this allows you to use your relentless trinket which reduces cc on you but then you have every man for himself and that gets you out of stuns so it reduces cc and you can still get out of stuns that's why human is really good but that's it, it, there's also merit to night elf as well night elf gives you shadow meld which stops um, players from casting spells on you so if you see a mage casting polymorph on you you can shadow meld it which is great and if you get the timing perfect and you see a stun or a fear coming you can actually shadow meld it you can shadow meld storm bolt if you see the storm bolt uh, mid air from the warrior you can shadow meld and it won't hit you or, or stun you and that is really good and another option are dark iron dwarves and regular dwarves these are two really good races for dispelling bleeds and the new maledic trinket um mind games all these these two races are really good i think dark iron dwarf for every debuff you dispel you get a stack gain and for dwarf it reduces damage on you i'm pretty sure i would probably go dwarf but dark iron dwarf is still really good um if it was up to me i'd probably go human or night elf just because those two just give you the most like dwarf and dark iron dwarf are good versus you know bleeds bleed classes but not every class you not every comp you create into is gonna have a bleed and that's when you have night elf and human they just overall have more consistent spells that you can use during a game when you log into the game you're gonna be very overwhelmed with what to do and i would say the first thing you want to do is you just want to pick the right talents the right pvp talents so let's just jump right into that here is my cookie cutter pretty much build for almost every single arena but i'll go through each row just to tell you if there's anything i change up uh, the first row never changes it's mist trap every time enveloping mist is your best heal and this increases its healing and increases its duration i don't ever switch out of mist trap although i wish i could play chi wave because i think chi wave is really good for mystic putting mystic touch which i'll talk about later on people but i think mist trap i've never changed once in like two expansions in the second row the two choices I play are, Ch are Cheat Torpedo and Tiger's Lust. Now, Cheat Torpedo is your default versus pretty much every comp that isn't a Windwalker or a Mage. Tiger's Lust is great versus these classes because Tiger's Lust gets you out of the roots of the Windwalker that they need to spend a few globals on. And they also, it puts you on a slow DR. So they're going to have a hard time slowing you again once you Tiger's Lust. If you're playing with melee, I would highly recommend Tiger's Lust because you don't want to dispel a Frost Nova and then 
your the 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 mage gets a polymorph on your DPS and you have to spell for it. So Tiger's Lust is really good for dispelling the Frost Nova. That way you still have to spell your normal dispel for polymorphs. In the third row, I have seen quite a few good things about life cycles. However, I mostly play Manatee. The reason for this is because there are quite a few times with the Cloud of Focus Legendary, which I will also talk about, where I'm casting Vivifies a few times in a row. So I feel like I'm losing out on mana. Also, most comps that you queue into, they don't have high sustained damage where I'm going to be using enveloping mist and vivify a lot a lot of the times classes have a minute and a half cooldown or a two minute cooldown that my manatee can line up with that i can use once they use their cooldowns so that's why i mostly run manatee in the fourth row it's pretty much ring a piece in threes from a threes point of view it's ring a piece every time a ring a piece is by far the most fun spell in the game it's not even close this gives you offensive capabilities defensive capabilities you can interrupt you can Put people into a wall man it is so funny i love it ring of peace is great however in twos i will deviate to song of chiji sometimes versus classes that can't really punish me uh for overextending you know versus melee you really ring of peace is is your go-to right because if if you get out of position if you overextend melee can punish you with stuns they can you know take advantage of your mobility that you just use to try to get to the enemy healer to you know ring uh, song of chiji so use ring of peace however versus casters like warlocks mages shadow priests balanced druids that have the long they, they have a long cooldown on their interrupts and they can't really kill you i play song of chiji for the healer and it's great now that also depends on what comp you're playing if you're playing with a warlock don't use it because song of chiji dr is with fear so if you're playing with druids uh, or warlocks i probably wouldn't play a song of chiji in the fifth row there's really two options you're going to play it's going to be diffuse magic or healing elixir i like to be on the safer side and have an extra defensive with diffuse magic this also reverses mind games and the new maldic trinket and i I kind of like that because then I don't have to waste a global. Then you could just use diffuse magic and then keep healing, or you could heal yourself, diffuse magic, get and on the global. And because diffuse magic is on the GC, I can renew mist, diffuse magic off the the maledict or the mind games, and then just keep healing off that GC. So that's why I run diffuse magic. However, there are people that play healing elixirs. There's I don't think there's any wrong choice here. Healing elixir is great versus comps with a little bit of spread pressure where they might be cleaving a little bit, maybe for some warrior teams, because warrior teams don't really have a lot of magic damage, so healing elixirs is great. Um, but if you're, ga I'm not much of a gambler, so I kind of like having diffuse magic for Maledix, but healing elixir is still really good for keeping yourself alive, and you can use it while silenced, which is great versus Shadow Priests. In the sixth row, you never spec out of Summon Jade Serpent Statue. This is one of the most iconic spells to miss weaver i wish it wasn't a talent but it is unfortunately this is just a great spell it's going to give you a lot of healing um that's passive and it's going to give you extra healing for single target healing so statue is the best talent in this row and don't ever switch out of it and the same goes for focus thunder in the final tier focus thunder gives you two charges of thunder focus t and as I, again i will talk about it in, later in the video but thunder focus t is the bread and butter of the mystery rotation this is how you heal people have good mana uh, stay keep people alive single target spread healing everything so focus thunder really really great i never spec out of this talent ever Followed by regular talents, you want to sort out your PvP talents, and these will change quite often depending on what you're queuing into. I'll try to give you some scenarios that are common that I've run into, and hopefully this helps. And the first thing I want to start off with is warrior comps. Warriors are one of the best, if not the best melee right now. You see warrior red, warrior windwalker, warrior DK, warrior hunter, pretty much warrior anything. And the most the most important talent to take versus warriors is grapple weapon this is the most important this lines up with their war breaker which is their, their big damage they're going to be doing damage so grapple weapon 45 second cooldown war breaker 45 second cooldown you want to instantly disarm them now the caveat to this is that warriors can use blade storm and if you grapple a weapon while they're blade storming, they won't get disarmed. So always be on the lookout for if warriors are blade storming. If they're not, instantly grapple weapon them. The next talent is Peace Weaver. Now this is a little bit of a weird talent that sometimes I ch I choose, and that's because what Peace Weaver does is it makes your revival a minute and a half cooldown, and it makes you immune all your anyone that's healed immune to magical damage and harmful effects. And this is really good versus Kyrian warriors. This makes it so when they spear you, when you revival with Peace Weaver, you're you're immune. You can run out of the spear. I get the question asked quite often. You could just run out. 
just run out. So if you know that the warrior's carrying that Kyrian too, or you don't want to gamble it too much, or if you're playing against warrior, like Shadow Priest, which is another common comp, or warrior Destro, or warrior Affliction Warlock, play Peace Weaver. It will dispel any dots. It will also get you out of Spear if you see it. The final talent is really up to whatever the class that the warrior's queuing with. If you're queuing into warrior Windwalker, warrior DK, warrior Hunter, anything double melee you're going to want to play eminence this will allow you to port while stunned this will prevent any hunters from trapping you off of stun this will prevent them from crushing you while stunned if they storm at you and try to swap to you you can port while stunned so this is a really great talent for if that happens now if you're, you're queuing into a um a warlock warrior zen focus is really good for getting some immunity to silence so that you don't get interrupted while casting which i think is a, a great option to have and those are really your two options there really isn't anything else i would say to run now if you know that the road the warrior isn't kirian you can run the dematerialize if they might run at you followed by chrysalis or eminence whatever you think that if you think you're going to be targeted play eminence if you don't you could play a little bit of zen focus t just so you don't get kicked especially if they're playing with the caster versus casters this is what i would recommend to play depending on the healer peace weaver obviously get dispels any dots it makes your whole team immune to magical effects so peace weaver obviously a game and zen focus as well versus warlocks shadow priests those balance shreds makes you immune to interrupts and silences which is again very important versus casters because they have so much crowd control and then you can shut them down with uh inter with being immune to interrupts and then the final one if you're playing against maybe a resto druid that tends to stun into cyclones you can play eminence if you're playing against an affliction warlock i would highly recommend playing healing spheres this makes it so your team can instantly get dispelled and you take there's no negative effects you could just get to spell that's great if you don't if you're not playing against a druid and you're not playing against a Felicia warlock chrysalis is also a good option i'm not a fan of chrysalis it was nerfed kind of unfortunate but those are the talents i would run versus casters while editing i realized i missed out on one build that is kind of niche but you should really know about is that is when you're playing into a team that has double purge like ellie shaman shadow priest resto shaman ellie Resto Shaman, Shadow Priest, something like that, where they have two purges, and most of the time they're casters. So you're gonna be playing Peace Weavers and Focusy, but the final talent that you want to be taking is Dome of Mist. What Dome of Mist does is when it gets purged, it will get purged, and then it'll put an absorption shield on the target that was purged that had enveloping mist that makes it so they absorb the damage of the remaining heal and then all healing received by the monk is increased by 30 percent and you can see it lasts for eight seconds so this isn't a talent that's used very often i use it in threes versus again double purge or in twos if i queue into resto shaman shadow priest resto shaman mage uh shadow priest fire mage which is a double dps comp that i see quite often so anything like that, that has a double purge i would highly recommend playing dome of mist and velvet mist is by far your best heal and when you get purged you just lose out on so much healing you're, you're gonna run out of mana very quickly these are the talents i run versus rmp especially right here with tiger's lust peace weaver is the the, the key to this matchup you, it lines up with combustion pretty well you could use pc weaver while your teammates are in smoke bomb or in shadowy duel they get healed and they get the immunity so keep that in mind eminence makes it so if you get stunned uh, by the rogue you can port and avoid the polymorph and zen focus t makes it so the mage can't kick you in the times where you need to heal because normally you get triple poly this may be a stun and you don't want to come out of that cc and then get interrupted it's it sucks trust me <laughs> trust me it, it's not the most fun and zen focus t gives you that time to heal your teammates back to full health once you get your talent set up you want to start gearing and your stat priority is intellect which is the most important stat that you can get intellect versatility mastery haste critical strike those that those are the stats you want to do and i would recommend just getting the pvp gear if you mostly pvp there's you don't have to fret if you don't pve you they just added a verse mastery weapon to the vendor which is amazing finally waited like a season and a half for this uh, thankfully they added it and i do have pve gear my mastery right now is 146 percent mastery 31 percent verse my haste is really low and it's honestly too low you want to get to about eight to ten percent haste that makes that's because soothing miss is on the gcd and it just feels kind of slow at two percent haste you if you get between the eight to ten percent haste that's kind of that's the sweet spot for soothing miss doesn't feel too slow just go for the go to the pvp vendor and just buy the gear prioritize the versatility mastery pieces like gloves i think there's legs that's verse mastery as well helms verse mastery and if there's any pieces of gear that don't have verse mastery go for verse haste 
you have to make a lot of decisions this expansion and another big decision is which covenant are you going to play well for arena you only have one option and that is necrolord necrolord gives you two abilities fleshcraft and bone dust brew and these two abilities are fantastic and pair with monk so well especially in combination with plague divisor Merilith, the this soulbind is your best option i'll also talk about this but i'll talk about the abilities real quick fleshcraft gives you a shield it's a castable shield you channel it and what it does is it gives you a shield for 30 percent of your max health over two seconds and then while you're channeling this you take 20 percent less damage the reason why this is important for is a few reasons one it's channeled so if a team kicks you and you get kicked on fleshcraft it's actually i don't know it's it's like the undead school or something like that and basically it's not the school that your healing spells are on so if you see the other team has a kick available and they also have cc you can go for a fleshcraft they kick it you can free cast which is amazing what it also does is if the team doesn't have any kicks available you can just fleshcraft especially if a team is hitting you and they're like whacking you and they're trying to do damage to you you can fleshcraft if they don't have kick and you take 20 percent less damage during that time hopefully it buys you enough time to port roll away get some mobility which again is really good for mistweaver now the class ability is bone dust brew this is the this is the ability that only monks get all, all three specs of monk get get this and what it does is you throw some bone dust brew on the ground and it gives your chant your healing spells a chance to do more healing a second bit of healing for 35 percent of, of the effectiveness and why this is good is because you're normally our biggest one of our best stats is mastery and what this does augustimus heals targets with your bonus true active for an additional 5,000 or whatever depending on stats that you have so if you this is a one minute cooldown one minute cooldown lines up with a lot of burst cooldowns and it just gives you more healing it's great you could just bone dust through you doing more healing with your mastery and from your vivify and renewing mist and it just it just gives you more healing and it also heals everybody around you what that means is if i am taking damage and so is my teammate i can bone dust through both of us we both get the buff for the healing and i can instantly just keep healing i would highly recommend putting renewing mist out and we both get healed for the mastery it's a lot of healing and you want to line it up with cooldowns that you see the other team is using. Now that you chose Necrolord, you can now choose a Soulbind and Conduits to put in. And there's really only one option you have, and that is the first Soulbind Plague Divisor Merilith I talked about it earlier. And there, there's a few reasons for this, but I'll kind of just go through why. Uh, first of all, you the Conduits you want to run for potency are Resplendent Mist, Bone Marrow Hops, and nourishing chi those are your three best conduits hopefully you can get an upgrade on them and you want to also follow it up with fortifying ingredients being the best endurance conduit uh, followed by harm denial or grounding breath you could really choose either i like harm denial because i can i get the benefit when i'm healing my teammates or myself the grounding breath is only if i'm casting on myself and there's not many games where i'm really using a lot of healing myself so that's why i kind of tend to run harm denial first but grinding breath again is also good you start by taking a volatile solvent and this makes it so if you flesh craft and you're in you are next to a dead body you get a healing you get a stat buff but if you just use it normally you will get a mastery buff you can see my mastery is increased by 120 and you're going to follow that out you're going to put responding mist here and you're going to get oozes frictions coating now this was nerfed it is still good what this does is when you drop below 50 percent health you get a shield for seven and a half percent of your maximum health which is good because it scales with your health so if you pre-fortifying brew a go you get a little bit of a shield from fortifying ingredients but you also get a bigger shield from oozes frictions coating speaking of the next conduit you're going to put fortifying ingredients i get a shield for almost twenty thousand when i fortifying brew which is really good um the next one up to you i just go with the kevin's key ring for the opening things but you could also go with plagueborn cleansing slime uh, that gives you some durability on your armor which to be fair i should be using i should be using i don't remember to repair my gear the next one is gonna be a potency conduit you want to get you want to get bone marrow hops now what this does is this increases the amount of healing that your bone does does when it procs so what that means is right now without this conduit you have what a 50 percent chance to do 35 percent more healing what this does is you have a 50 percent chance to do 80 percent more healing i actually have a few games from last night where let me see 12 run arena hook point this was a pretty good game so i have some healing from last night uh, the gust of mist 
from the Promare hops is kind of hidden. It, it's kind of hard for details to kind of figure it out, which is fine. Here's some of the bone dust brew, but a lot of it is from my mastery healing. You can see why mastery is so important is because it does pretty much double both of my next heals combined. The next one you could choose between finesse conduit or an endurance conduit i kind of lean more towards endurance just because i kind of i play more defensive i play super defensive super safe i'm not really an aggressive player i like to play safe so i run with harms and i'll expel harm now if you do want to run finesse i would highly recommend either lingering numbness or dizzying tumble i like dizzying tumble a lot but i do also my favorite is lingering numbness because the slow is really fun um the next one you don't have a choice it's ultimate form so what this does is this is a, a huge buff to your fleshcraft you will be you are immune to crowd control when you're channeling fleshcraft and you're also regenerating two percent of your health every second you're channeling it and then if you get a full channel it gives you three extra seconds of being immune to crowd control so let me just show you what that means i'm gonna uh do fleshcraft and you see i'm immune to crowd control i fully channeled it and i'm immune to crowd control for three more seconds so a total that gives you five seconds where you're immune to crowd control if you get the full channel the next option is gonna be a potency conduit and it's nourishing chi what this does is it increases the healing of your hots when you life cocoon and then even after your life cocoon is over you get a buff so what this means is if i life cocoon and my life cocoon goes away i get a buff for nourishing chi which makes my healing over time effects healing is increased by 37 percent that includes my renewing mist my enveloping missed all those essence font you don't, really, you don't use essence font arena but you know if you're going to do a hot any of your hots do more healing which is great this just gives you more healing output the next one is actually a pretty difficult choice you can go with vicious trail when you're struck by a snare you drop a puddle that lasts for 10 seconds enemies that step in the puddle are slowed by 70 percent for five seconds this is pretty good versus if you think melee might tunnel you or you want an extra slow i actually surprising i don't know why i have this on i mostly lean towards undulating maneuvers and what this does is all the time when above 80 percent health five percent of the damage taken is absorbed and spread over five seconds it's like a little mini like uh brewmaster thing where it's stagger i think you just stagger it and you don't take the full damage you take it over over time and this is a, this is a really great defensive one if you want finesse you can also go with lingering numbness i would also maybe recommend dizzying tumble both of them are good it just depends on if you want to slow or if you want to stop damage i mean those are your two options the final uh Soulbind is Kevin's oozling. What this does is when you bone dust brew, Kevin stands by your side and attacks your target and you deal extra damage to this target. It also gives you a chance to shield your teammates if you use on them. I don't, Kevin, the only real use for Kevin specifically is keeping people in combat. For example, if there's a healer over here right by the pillar trying to drink and I'm kind of far away, I don't have any true torpedoes to get there. What you can do is you can bone dust brew and Kevin will attack them and keep them in combat, which is really great. I mean, you do lose out on the additional healing from, from the bone dust brew, but obviously if the other healer is going for a drink, they're probably falling behind or something. So it's a really good way to stop healers or rogues or druids from getting restelts or drinking, anything like that. It's Kevin, you know, he comes in clutch sometimes. Your talents, you've chosen your covenant, you got your soul binds, you got some conduits. Now you have to choose a legendary. In arena, you have two legendaries that you play. You play Clotted Focus and you play Cephus. The reason why you need two is because you have two different scenarios where you need them. The first one, Cephus, ideally you play this versus Rogue Mage and Jungle. What Cephus does is it has two effects. The first one is it reduces all crowd control on you by 10%. This is every single crowd control. So if you're an Orc Monk or just an Orc in general and you're playing Cephus with it. This reduces all stuns on you by 28%, almost a third. Almost a third of the stun durations on you are reduced. So this also goes for polymorphs. This reduces polymorphs by 10%. Anything, all CC stuns, clones, fears, anything, 10%, which is great for RMP and jungle because they're basically, they're setup comps. They rely on crowd control to get a kill. The second effect is that when you apply a, a CC to somebody or interrupt, you can't interrupt as a misweaver, or if you dispel a teammate, you get a stat bonus of 80 for 15 seconds. And this can only last 30 seconds. It's a 30 second internal cooldown. So it, you, it's actually a decent amount of stats, but 
what you're really doing it for is a 10% reduction of crowd control. Really important versus those setup comps. The other legendary you want to be using is Cloud of Focus. And if you're not queuing into RMP or jungle, you're playing Cloud of Focus. There's no other option. What this does is when you use Enveloping Mist or Vivify, you get a buff that stacks. And each time you use Enveloping Mist and Vivify, it gives you another stack. And it reduces, for each stack, it reduces the mana cost but and increase the healing of Envelop Mist and Vivify up to three times. And that's a little complicated, but I'll kind of, I'll show you. So I am using Soothe the Mist, I Vivify, I get a st I get a buff that increases the healing of Vivify and Envelop Mist by 20% and reduces their cost. So this is really important. This is key to why Mist Weavers are really good at mana because this just, this got buffed and it used to be 10% or 15, I think it used to be 15% and then they buffed it to 20. So each stack, Increase the healing and reduce the mana cost of Enveloping Mist and Vivify. And that's why you see Mist Weavers that can do it right, that can use Vivifies to kind of generate stacks and you finish it off with a big Enveloping Mist because Enveloping Mist is your best hot. That's why you don't see us running out of mana because Enveloping Mist, Enveloping Mist on its own costs a ton of mana. But as you could see for each stack, it used to be 2,600 and now it's 1,100. 60% reduction in mana cost but it does 60 percent more healing and that's why cloud of focus is by far the best legendary you can use quick note as well if you're just gearing through pvp you want to make cloud of focus on your wrist and you want to use the verse mastery neck i don't want to steer you in the wrong direction i have it as well i just like to use verse mastery because i have a verse mastery wrist because i pve a lot and so i have a verse mastery wrist that also has leech on it and i use that instead but what you want to do is if you're just gearing through pvp you put the cloud of focus on your wrist and you use the verse mastery neck if you're playing using sefus you want to put it on your chest and you want to use verse mastery on it because there's no verse mastery chest on the pvp vendor right now let me talk about some macros real quick i do use quite a few macros and scripts you will see in the description of every one of my videos is a link and you can just follow that link and get all of them, but I'll talk about them very quickly. I use Arena 123 macros for my paralysis. I, I, there are people that use focus macros. I like to use Arena 123. I still have a focus frame keybind, but I like to use Arena 123. It gives me a lot of flexibility in who I can in-cap and I don't really think much of it. I do use a Bone Dust Brew at Cursor macro. So what this does is I don't need to kind of click a second time. I can just Bone Dust Brew. Boom. And you'll see a lot of my macros are like that. I'm trying to find any other macros that might be, this is a macro, I couldn't get used to it, but it is useful. What this does is it's a help harm macro. And if I'm targeting a teammate, it'll cast Soothing Mist. If I'm targeting the enemy, it'll use Kraken Jade Lightning. Here's what that will look like. I'm targeting myself, so I'm gonna use Soothing Mist. But if I'm targeting an enemy, I'm gonna Kraken Jade Lightning. And it's really good if you feel like you're running out of keybinds they're very helpful and they're very useful and you can incorporate that into a lot of different macros but i just don't use them because I, I don't know i just couldn't get used to it at all i also have a drink macro that has all the water that you could use to restore mana conjured mana buns is the first one which uh, mages can make and then these are the two drinks that you can get from the hearthstone uh, innkeeper and oribos oh here's a good one here's a taunt macro what this does is It'll taunt the Infernal versus Destro Warlocks. It'll it'll taunt the Greater Earth Elemental from Resto Shaman or Ellie Shaman that are using that Dwayne Legendary. And then it'll just cast Provoke on that. So it targets them and casts Provoke. This is good for breaking CC on you because the, both of the Infernals and Greater Earth Elemental do AOE damage. And if, I don't know, they're playing with like a Hunter or something or like some, some kind of CC that instantly breaks, this will break it for you. Here's a script called Mystic123. What this does is this will put you on the bottom of the raid frame at all times if I run it, and that will put you on the bottom every time. It just organizes the party members easily for me to see. Orb macro. So these two orb macros, I would say are really important. This first orb macro, this will make it so I put an orb at wherever my mouse is. And because you can't target where you put an orb, you can target your, you can put one on yourself. So if you feel like you're about to, you have a dot on yourself, but you you know you don't want to take the time to put um, an orb on you, you could just at player. Now you can't use this for your teammates. Unfortunately, you can't use this for your teammates. You can only use it for the at player. It's still really helpful for when you put an, a port down and put an orb on top. It works really well. These are dispel macros, which I would say are really important for 
having quick dispels it's very i would say as a healer one of the best things you can do is have really fast dispels make it so your, your dps don't even feel like they were ncc provoke macro so this is my all-in-one provoke macro what this does is it will taunt arena one pet if they're if they're not in line or they're not there or two and then three and if it doesn't do anything it'll cast provoke this is great for you casting provoke on a t on an enemy is good versus rogues and druids that are trying to get restealth it's also good for stopping drinks and keeping people in combat but it's also good for provoking pets you can taunt pets towards you and it allow it if you time it right, they'll break CC, which is mostly used for hunters. Oh, did I use the wrong? Oh, script one, two, three makes it so the nameplates on the other team, their nameplates are, or their arena number. So one, two, three, it helps with having arena one, two, three macros. This is, I would say, if there's any macro to use, use this one. So this is an no mod at target help, no dead exists life cocoon macro. And what this does is this will make so, make it so if you are not if you are targeting somebody and they are alive you will use life cocoon if you're not targeting somebody if you are if they are an enemy if they're dead or if they don't exist this will not use life cocoon so what this means is i'm not targeting anybody right now i'm pressing life cocoon i could smash this in and it won't work what this also means and this is really important for rbgs is if i'm targeting somebody and they're dead my life cocoon will not go off i i can smash this button my, i'm not because this is a dead target this is also good if your teammate gets life i see this so many times if your teammate gets mind controlled right when you're about to press life cocoon and you're not using this macro you will life cocoon yourself and that is it's really not good please if if there's any macro you can take from this video it is this one it is i have an at cursor life cocoon or um ring a piece so i just have right where my cursor is it uses ring a piece and i also have the same thing for jade servant statue so essentially the same thing i just put a statue down on my cursor and it summons one and that is it besides this last one this is my stop casting macro i have cancel aura roll because i <sighs> one day they'll bring back cancel roll before getting into anything complicated or anything the number one thing you want to know is how what your healing spells actually do so let's just quickly talk about our mastery our mastery is gust of mist and what this does is when you use renewing mist enveloping mist expel harm revival or vivify you get a second heal and it's called gust of mist and depending on how much mastery you have it does a certain amount of healing mine does 3931 and that is with my mastery set yours might do more yours might do less but it, you have a second heal whenever you use those spells i will actually just very quickly i will put my healing i don't usually have floating combat healing but i will show you now that i have floating combat text you should see some kind of number here hopefully two numbers boom you see two numbers that's your master that's your gust of mist you could also check the combat log we should see some kind of gust of mist right here so you get a second heal because your mastery that can also crit there's also a chance that, that crits another important spell your renewing mist is your most one of like you need to have this on as many teammates as possible the reason for that is because of vivify what vivify does is i think this is a monk spell yeah, uh, it should be a monk spell right here. What this does is it heals your primary target and then it heals all other targets that have Renewing Mist on them for another heal. And this will also heal your target more if they have Renewing Mist on them. And that is that is the key to the Mist Weaver rotation. Keeping Renewing Mist on as many people as possible. If I'm taking damage and my teammate is taking damage, I can Vivify myself. I'll wait for the heal to go away. And if I vivify, my teammate gets healed because they have renewing mist on them. Likewise, if I am taking damage, you're both taking damage, I heal my teammate, boom, I get healed for vivify. So that, because I have renewing mist on me, that is why in a lot of the Monk Mondays and when I'm healing, I'm always prioritizing renewing mist over anything because you get a heal from your mastery, but as well from vivify, you all get healed. You also get healed more by the cleave heal. So for each stack you're just doing more healing it all comes down to keep renewing mist on as many people as possible keeping it up making sure you and your team have renewing mist and using your vivifies whenever you need to your next heal that you want to understand is enveloping mist it, and there's really not much to understand about about enveloping mist it's just a strong heal that costs a lot of mana uh what this does is it heals your target for 
X amount over 7 seconds. And then also increases healing received from your other spells by 40%. So keep that in mind. That's why Enveloping Mist is so important. That's why when you queue into Shaman and Priest, you want to play Dome of Mist. Because they're going to be trying to snipe that heal. It is very situational what you should do with Enveloping Mist. What I tend to do is make sure of course make sure you keep renewing mist up on as many people as possible like i've said now if your teammate is you know not really in danger not taking much damage just cast soothing mist there's there's no problem with just sitting here having your statue channel soothing mist on your teammate remember keep always keep your statue in line on your target now if they start taking a little bit of damage then yeah we throw out a vivify and now it's a little unfortunate because we're gonna lose stacks but you know they're not taking much damage if your teammate is starting to take a lot of damage and you know you got a vivify up you got one stack you're going to want to throw out probably another vivify into an enveloping mist and what this does is it reduces the mana cost of enveloping mist by 60 percent but it increases the healing of it by 60 percent and then you could follow that up with that enveloping mist because you're taking your teammates taking more healing you could throw a renewing mist another one and then throw a vivify out because all of that healing is buffed from your enveloping mist and also from your cloud of focus and you could see why Oh, so you start to see now i see why mistweavers can do so much healing is because you have so many modifiers the next very important spell that you need to understand is thunder focus t and what this does is this empowers your next two spells because you're playing focus thunder remember you have two charges of it and what this does is it empowers depending on what spell you use if you use thunder focus t and then enveloping mist it'll instantly heal for a certain amount because enveloping mist by itself is just a hot renewing mist it will increase the duration uh vivify costs no mana and rising sun cake the cooldown is reduced by nine seconds now most of the time i won't really use thunder focus t for renewing mist or rising sun kick granted there are situations where i will push in to do damage with rising sun kick but what you want to do is you want to use thunder focus t for vivify and enveloping mist and here's kind of what i do and that now you know you got the real basic rotation down you're keeping your renewing mist up you you got kind of got an understanding you're using your vivifies at a good time you throw an enveloping mist when you can like two or three stacks but now you have thunder focus t and remember thunder focus t you can use while channeling soothing mist now that we incorporate thunder focus t in our rotation it's also important to know that thunder focus t can be used while channeling soothing mist this is important because it's not going to break your soothing mist which means you keep your stacks of cloud of focus and you can kind of weave it in off the gcd when you use a vivify and here's kind of how i use it i use let's just say my teammate is taking let's just say my teammate's taking a large amount of damage what i'll do is i'll normally Soothing Mist, Vivify, Thunder Focus T, Vivify into an Enveloping Mist. And that's what I'll do. That way I get three stacks and my Enveloping Mist gets that healing, my mana reduction and healing increase. The reason why this is important is because Thunder Focus T makes Vivify cost no mana. So if I use one Vivify, it costs, how much mana does Vivify? This cost, this is 1,000, let's just say 2,000 mana for that and then i thunder focus t and vivify that costs no mana and then the next enveloping mist does instant healing has the increased hot and does a huge increase from the gust of mist. that's a lot of healing and that's that's pretty much that's the rotation right there every 30 seconds you have thunder focus t which empowers your heal what you another thing you can do is if you want to be super conservative on mana is you can use thunder focus t for two free vivifies in a row this is something also it's very common thing that I do is I use Thunder Focus T, Vivify, Vivify. Those cost no mana. Those give me two free, basically free stacks of Cloud of Focus. And then I can use Empower Thunder. I can use Thunder Focus T for extra healing and mana. So I heal Thunder Focus T, Vivify, Vivify, cost no mana. And then I throw an Enveloping Mist. And although that doesn't have the initial healing, it does have the empowered more heal. I call it empowered, but it's just more healing and mana reduction. And then you can also throw renewing mist out, and especially keep renewing mist on everybody. And that's that's pretty much the rotation as far as what you're gonna be doing from your game to game. You're never gonna use essence font in an arena match. Um, now, if you are, if you do see some, let's throw in manatee here. Let's just say we, you know, manatee just got changed that you can use it while channeling soothing mist which is a huge buff because then you don't have to break your soothing mist cast or your cloud of focus buffs so what you could do now this can get it seem a little bit weird but you know bear with me here um if you see that your team is taking a lot of damage the first thing i would do is i'll just throw some renewing mist out right and then what you could do is you could soothing mist thunder focus see vivify vivify into a manatee enveloping mist and then that way, the Vivify, the Enveloping Mist costs 560 mana. It costs 560 mana down from what? I think it's 2,800, 2,800 mana. And it drops it down to 560. And that is why 
it is so good to have mana to being able to use mana to walk channeling soothing mist and again you're gonna have renewing mist up so you can be able to get that cleave healing from vivify you're gonna be getting the full stacks from your cloud of focus their thunder focus teas are gonna cost your vivifies to cost no mana and that's why monks one don't have many mana issues now even though versus some comps um depending on what comp you're playing you might run into some mana issues if you're playing with casters against i don't know maybe red warrior has a lot of uptime a lot of damage then yeah you might have run into some mana issues but for the most part mana really isn't that much of an issue for monks if you are playing sephus like i am right now the rotation is pretty much the same because you're, you're not getting those cloud of focus buffs you're actually the reason another reason why you're playing Cephus is because versus jungle and rmp you're never really gonna run out of mana because you're in cc for 80 percent of the game so you're, rege you're regening your mana uh, quite a bit so mana normally isn't an issue you see me over healing a lot versus those comps because mana is really nothing so if you're not playing cloud of focus again i just make again make sure you keep renewing mist up on as many teammates as possible every time every single time you get that mastery healing you get the renew mist healing you get the vivify healing and you're just going to vivify is going to be your primary heal and if your teammate starts taking some damage, you're just going to Thunder Focus Team Vivify. That's pretty much it. The rotation is much simpler because you don't have much to worry about as far as stacks and your Soothing Mist uh, cast dropping. Some spells that I haven't talked about yet that I want to quickly talk about. One, Expel Harm. This is a very underrated healing spell. And what this does is it's an instant heal. Boom. That heals you. And or if you're channeling, you can use soothing uh expel harm on your teammate while channeling soothing mist and it heals them and yourself now this is just a small heal what i tend to do is if i'm taking a little bit of damage i just use expel harm and if teammates especially if i'm being targeted if, the, if i'm being targeted and i'm the other team has kicks i'll normally bone despair renewing mist and then i'll expel harm myself just because there's a chance for it to proc the mastery and it actually if it procs it does a decent amount of healing well, mystic touch is yeah mystic touch is the other passive i, I kind of want to talk about this makes it so when you deal damage to a target that target takes five percent increased physical damage by five percent so if i'm playing with a melee and i we're doing burst cooldown you know let's just say you don't need to have 100 percent uptime but you want to do it when it matters so if the other team is at like let's just say my warrior is targeting the healer and my warrior storm bolts the healer and i you want to zap it that way that target is taking five percent more physical damage and this is any damage you know you can you know you can do rising sun kick you can pretty much do spinning crane kick doesn't matter any of any of your damaging spells will put that debuff up and yeah that's pretty much it for like other spells i want to talk about one of the biggest weaknesses that misweavers have is having good cooldowns now we have two three cooldowns one of them is decent and i'll just talk about those real quick oh we got we got somebody here hello the first cooldown which is no surprise our major cooldown is life cocoon what this does is this uh, gives your teammate an absorption shield and increases all of your hots by 50 percent so that's important because you can use life cocoon and you can put a hot up and your teammate will normally be fine renew usually i'll go life cocoon and i'll throw a renewing mist instantly because it's an instant heal you can't get interrupted and then i'll try to sneak in an enveloping mist even if they have kick available and then if you have the nourishing chi conduit you get this healing over time buff still uh for i think it's five seconds after so that's why life cocoon is a really good single target heal but it also you know in the hot you can put your hots down and they're empowered i say empowered a lot but they're buffed uh, from that conduit and that's why life cocoon is your primary def defensive cooldown this is normally the last cooldown i use i have a video that i'll put in the description of how i rotate my cooldowns life cocoon is only the last one because it's really one of the only cooldowns we can actually use on somebody uh the next cooldown is revival and this is just an aoe heal that heals everybody this does heal with your mastery and it dispels everything now if you're using peace weaver which normally you are it also is a minute and a half cooldown and it makes your whole team whoever gets healed immune by to magical damage and harmful effects so what this does it makes them immune to mind games any damage combustion lines up really well with combustion anytime you play into like affliction warlocks mages even curing warriors uh, revival is a really good cooldown just kind of it kind of just resets a little bit your team you know gives you kind of top them off a little bit now something to note is this is affected by bone dust brew it is rng but if you bone dust brew and then revival there is a chance that your team does get healed for bone dust brew which you see uh we did um i healed bone dust brew for 9k and then this bone dust brew healed for 10k so bone dust brew into a revival is a fantastic way to top your team and keep them alive invoke yulon so i do get some questions about yulon how how does she work what why do people complain about her well here's the reason why yulon is both decent and bad at the same time so yulon 
when you summon her, she'll summon a soothing breath. It'll normally be healing you and it won't be healing your teammate. Now, the only way to get value out of Yulon is if you enveloping mist because she will put enveloping breath on the target, which is a hot and then increases healing from the monk by by 10 percent so normally this is my first cooldown i used and i will throw you know an enveloping mist out get the the hot up because you know it just increased the healing done and then throw renewing mist out and really pair it with manatee as well because you do have to use enveloping mist and that's kind of why it's annoying because if it's a three minute cooldown minute and a half cooldown with manatee sometimes you kind of have them staggered and it doesn't line up with manatee you're gonna have to use a lot of mana to get that enveloping myth out it's really good single target really poor cleave healing you know using enveloping mist especially if you use it with thunder focus t and cloud of focus it's it's mostly gonna be overheal it's really good to use right before you get stuck in crowd control like versus rogue mage or like jungle but versus you know melee comps or casters it's just gonna be a lot of overhealing one last cooldown that i want to talk about and this is probably a first cooldown you're going to use if you're being targeted is fortifying brew this is a three minute cooldown and which got nerfed going into shadowlands it used to be a minute and a half and this makes it so you increase your maximum health by 15 percent and reduces damage taken by 15 percent and also if you're using fortifying ingredients you're going to be getting 24 percent of your max health shield if it's empowered so for me i think that's about 20k it's 19,200, so it's roughly 19k or 20k and this is just your should be your first cooldown you use when you're being targeted another big weakness that monks have is utility and that is, this is going to be a very short part of the video because monks don't really have much i would say your best utility is disarm if you're playing against a warrior team you want to play disarm but that's really the only utility you have if you see warbreaker use it if you you know disarm that's really the best utility you have another good utility is leg sweep if you get kicked you can leg sweep an enemy, but that's that's pretty much the best utility you have. Ring of Peace is your best bet for some utility, and you could use this. This is it's literally the best spell in the game. You could use it to interrupt somebody. You can use it to kite away, usually right around kind of on the pillar. You could use it to knock somebody into a wall. You can. There's so many different uses for Ring of Peace. So try to learn Ring of Peace. Learn like how people bounce. What it's good against it's really good for getting away from hunter pets and you know there are classes that can counter it warriors can blade storm it druid or druids can kind of leap through it demon hunters just double dash through it i think rogues can cloak it death knights can death advance through it so just know there are classes that can run through it but for the most part it's really good defensively if you're getting um targeted but it's also good offensively for interrupts or mostly getting people out of position you know if they're if they're in the middle of the map or like they're on a pillar you know if the other team's on the pillar what you can do is you just rob them you know your team's burst and they're trying to cut away just rob them behind the pillar positioning is probably the most important thing you can do as a misweaver if you do not position correctly you will lose a lot doesn't matter how good you are you your positioning is the most important thing in every single matchup it doesn't matter what you're queuing into casters melee caster melee it doesn't matter you need to position correctly and what you need to do is you need to play as far away as you can trust i learned the hard way listen i don't like to play this way i like to be in your face doing damage i want to be zapping you i want to be kicking you in the face i want to roll in i want to kick you in the face but you can't do that you can't do that as a mystery not in this meta not with how squishy we are not with the amount of cc and damage people have what you want to do is you want to put your port behind a pillar you want to stay very close to a pillar and you want to just heal from far away as much as you can you, you want to zap as you know get mystic touch up but you want to make sure you zap and just heal your teammates from behind the pillar if you see the other team pushing on you roll avoid use ring a piece to get away and just you need to stay as far away as you can and have make sure your teammates kite towards you but kind of they away from your pillar but like towards you as long as they stay in your line but away from your pillar that's kind of what you want to do you do not want to push in the only time you want to push in is if you have like roll and you can leg sweep and then you can pour it out you know very quickly get your cc and then get out of there because if you stay around you're gonna be cc forever and you do not want to be caught in crowd control I spoke about this a lot when I was talking about cloud of focus healing rotation but as far as mana management goes the biggest thing you can do one always keep renewing mist up on your teammates and then use your vivifies but the bread and butter of your mana is your thunder focus t if you know you're in a dampener you know you're playing against boomy like shadow priest they're not going to die for a while what you want to do is you want especially you're going to be using cloud of focus what you want to do is you want to just make sure you're using thunder focus t vivify vivify that costs zero mana zero mana and if you have mana t throw an enveloping mist out 
560 mana for enveloping mist and empowers your heal that was one percent of my mana and that is probably the most healing you ever be able to do as a mist weaver i mean that is so much healing that is so much healing so just keep that in mind um thunder focus t empowers makes it so you vivify cost no mana it helps you generate cloud of focus stacks for free which is amazing and you don't want to miss out don't miss out on any of that vivify cleave healing don't do it it also gets buffed by a cloud of focus um stack so you know if, if let's just say i'm taking damage real quick here let's just say i'm you know i took quite a bit of damage um and i'm just vivifying and my teammates taking damage and i'm vivifying i'm look at all this healing i'm missing out on this is so much healing i'm missing out and then what after using mist and like expel harm or like some kind of vivify to heal myself instead what you can do is if you're taking damage and your teammate's taking damage renewing mist and then renewing mist yourself and you get a little bit of healing and then you heal your teammate look i just, two vivifies i'm healing my teammate but i'm also healing myself and that's how you save mana as a mist weaver use your mana tease trade it when you see offensive cooldowns avatar incarn anything like that any major cooldowns combustion vendetta from rogues just line it up with some cooldown where you know you're gonna be taking some damage add-ons everyone loves add-ons every single one of my videos has my entire ui in the description of those videos so if you want my add-ons my ui take them these are my add-ons right here um i use quite a bit for i raid i mythic plus i pet battle so i do these are my add-ons the only major add-ons i would say you need are big debuffs diminish big debuffs makes it so you know if you see cc on somebody if you see crowd control on somebody you will see it it's huge it's really great big debuffs i could just toggle test mode you could see it that's really good um other add-ons diminish this shows you know what dr you're on which i would say is really important you and your teammates i just test myself uh s arena gladius something like that a raid frame or an arena frame you can see s arena i use right here i like s arena people like gladius people like gladius x completely completely personal preference and on the bar so this tracks cooldowns and stuff like that if you want all of my bars they are free they are yours you can use you can use them do whatever you want with them complete ask me questions i can make my own for you um use that and then the final one is weak auras i do have my own weak auras they are also in the description i also made an entire weak aura dynamic group for anyone that wants to see cooldowns so this is enemy cooldowns used this will pop up on your screen when a major cooldown gets used a trinket you know you see warbreaker healing tide totem doom wins friends defensive offensive trinkets die by the sword anything i made that weak aura it's in the description please if you want it have it take it use it make it better completely up to you and finally we have what comps can miss weavers play miss weavers can play pretty much every comp just know that if you're playing with a rogue or a mage that take a lot of damage you're or warlock you're gonna have to go for drinks ideally your best comps for miss weavers and twos are gonna be miss weaver warrior miss weaver windwalker miss weaver outlaw rogue if the outlaw rogue is insane miss weaver demonology warlock or miss weaver honestly fire mage could work too anything that can keep themselves alive where if you're a second crowd control they can kind of just heal and they have cooldowns to rotate in threes you have a lot more options i would say your best bet is tsg turbo red warrior if you like to play double melee if you like to play with casters fire mage ellie or shadow play which is shadow priest affliction warlock demon warlock is also amazing if you want to play caster melee shadow priest warrior thunder is also decent that's my main comp i've been queuing some thunder quite a bit that is ellie warrior anything like that really good class that can keep themselves alive while you're stuck in crowd control or while you're going for a drink are absolutely the most important thing and that is pretty much it for me thank you so much for anybody who watched it all the way through i can talk about miss weaver or wow in general for a very long time i'm looking over here i see an hour 16 minutes i'll probably chop this down hopefully it's not that long i tried my best to incorporate both for new players and advanced players kind of what's going through my mind healing rotations everything like that mana management and uh that is pretty much it please ask me any questions you have have a fantastic rest of your day hope you enjoyed the video hopefully this was helpful and i'll see you later